Welcome back to Mark Haney, igniting the entrepreneurial revolution with the Haney Biz Project. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the Haney Biz Project, brought to you courtesy of the great guys over at Hub International. I'm Mark Haney, and I'm joined by Gary Simon, CEO of CleanStar, who has been driving billions of dollars in revenue and creating thousands of jobs. Great for our economy. We love what you're doing. Welcome to the show, Gary Simon. Hey, Mark. It's great to be back. Yeah, thank you. And let's, for those of you that don't know Clean Start, don't know Gary, give us an overview of your company and let's get a little bit of your background as well. Yeah, it's a nonprofit organization that helps get companies uh, ready to go out there, be a success, um, get their sales up, get investment that they need. Um, but it's basically around companies that are in energy efficiency, solar, wind, other renewables, uh, reducing pollution, uh, creating new products and services that, that are in the sustainable realm. Uh, so uh, we don't actually um, make a product. Um, you know, we're, we're not the one doing the work. We're trying to help the people to do the work. Now, I've had a 45-year career doing uh, yeah. the stuff in the businesses. So, so uh, you're that, helping entrepreneurs and business people to grow those businesses, right, the sustainable eco-friendly businesses, but you've been doing that for a long time. So let's get a little bit of your background and we'll talk to you, talk about how it uh, has translated into Clean Start. All right. Well, um, I actually got a master's degree over UC Davis. So that's what got me here. Okay. Where'd you come from? Indiana. Okay. Um, so Indiana was not the most um, forward looking on the environment at the time. I remember the 20 foot high suds rolling down the White River near my house. Um, they eventually cleaned all that up. But at any rate, um, came here in 1970, um, worked in state government, uh, worked in the assembly. Um, your dad was on in the Senate. I don't think he was there at the time. Yeah, Ted Gaines. Um, uh, but uh, went from that to working with some uh, big companies. I worked in the Carter administration. I've, I've been a senior executive at, at Fortune 100 companies and then, then got the bug. I got yeah. your bug. Ah, got the entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial. And uh, worked with a number of small companies trying to, to build up from there. And when, My degree is in ecology. I really want to see how people can do well by doing good. Yeah, I'm going to adjust this mic on you, too, just so it's up a little higher, because I know you have to bend down. You've got to speak right into these things. So, okay, so you, 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 were at, you had Sarda going. Uh, now, it's, uh, now you got Clean Start. Talk to us about that transition, and what's, what's Clean Start do today? Well, Clean Start was a part of Sarda. Sarda was the Sacramento Regional Technology Alliance. It also had Ag Start, Med Start, and, and uh, Venture Start, which was a general um, startup assistance network. But... Um, it, it got into funding problems, but uh, uh, each of the individual little starts basically have gone out on their own. Uh, so we relaunched Clean Start in uh, April of 2016, and uh, we've got it going now. We've had classes. We've had uh, helping people with funding, mentorship, uh, networking events. We're back on the, on the roll again. And uh, we want to keep the momentum up that we've created. We started this in 2005, my partner Mark Henwood and I. So we've been at it for 12 years, and we want to make sure that, that momentum continues here in the region. Right now, Sacramento is ranked pretty well in terms of uh, the environmental friendly nature, right, and from a carbon footprint. Yeah, we're, we're in the top 10 or top 15 of all cities in the nation. Uh, we didn't start that way. When we began this, we didn't even make the top 50. Um, some of that was just making sure people knew what we were doing here, but also there have been a lot of changes. You see a lot of the activity that the, the city, the counties, other uh, cities in the region uh, have been doing, and, it, and it's all contributed. And we're particularly uh, blessed here with SMUD, because SMUD will take a risk when no other utility will. Uh, if it uh, enhances the environment, improves sustainability. What kinds of things are, is SMUD doing to, uh, to promote this entrepreneurship and to promote uh, you know, this process or this, uh, this effort that you're, you have? Well, uh, they have been supporting with grants to people who have good ideas to give them uh, an opportunity to demonstrate their products. Uh, but right now, one of their most important things is they'll be an early adopter. They'll buy your product uh, first off and, uh, you know, do reviews of it for you. And, of course, if you can get a foot in the door with, with some customer, uh, that's, you know, worth 
a hundred times its weight in gold when you're talking to the next customer and the next customer and the next customer, going back to your sales idea. You bet. Now, the companies that um, are part of the Clean Start effort, uh, what kind of companies are those? Well, um, we try to help, of course, the startups, the ones that, that are the small companies. It, it's a handful of people, and they're trying to get going. Now, we're trying to build them up. The whole theory of of Clean Start, uh, and I would say Ag Start and Med Start as well, is, is built from within. Uh, we can recruit companies to come in here and they bring 1,500 jobs, but if they came here because our power prices are lower and our cost of living is a little bit lower, then they're going to leave when some other city provides them the next incentive. If you grow them here from the base, they, they create deep roots and they stay here. Yeah. And that's what we want. So we tend to work with the smallest companies and try to grow them into something big. Now it's happening. After doing this for 12 years, now you see companies out there with, with you know, tens of millions, even approaching $100 million in revenue. They get big investment. So I think it's, it's working, and we want to keep that going. You know, these companies, how soon do, does a typical startup in this, uh, in this clean tech environment, how soon do they go, start going after revenue? Because we started talking about that at the beginning of the show. Hey, if you don't get sales, it is tough to stick around. Well, when, when you're in the clean tech area and in many of the other tech areas, if you're not focused on what's my product and why does some people want to write me a check, yeah. as we tell all of our companies that we're, we're trying to coach on this stuff, is nothing good happens until somebody writes a check. Right. And it's you're not talking you. about just venture capital. You're talking about customer paying you some money for your product. Well, what's happened now in, in the venture investing world is – um, a lot of people have been burned by investing too early in companies and the returns weren't all that great. So now they basically tell you, you know, when, when you've got a half a million dollars in revenues and you've got a, you know, a dozen customers, come back and talk to us. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do <laughs> in order to get to that level? I mean, there aren't many people around here that have pockets that deep. And that's one of the gaps that we're trying to help them fill. So the faster you can get your product to market, the better. Yes. And, and as fast attract- as you can do it correctly. We're having a class on this in September. It's called Ramping Up Revenue. Nice. Um, and so, you know, everybody that's out there that wants to learn the details on this, it's going to be about a three or four hour class with some great speakers, middle of September. Uh, and it, it, it's Gary at cleanstart.org, by the way. Um, so what we're trying to focus on is, you know, what is the product you're trying to sell? If, if you're into a lot of these technical areas, Nine times out of ten, you're focused on how great you think the technology is. Yes. You want to make a technical sale. It's got all these things. To a customer, it's like, what's in it for me? Yeah. So as we try to coach people, we tell them, look, your sales are going to be five times what they would otherwise be if the customer is talking more than you are. Because he'll describe to you the product he wants. Yes. you got to listen. Now, you have to get him interested, yes, but listen more than you talk is one of the keys when you're trying to develop a, a new product and a new market because you'll probably go back and change your product after you hear what they're really looking for. So often I see people who are missing, they have gaps in their in their skill set. Everybody's great at something. Some guy might be great at the product, right? He's an expert. He's great at technology. Um, and another guy might be great at sales and marketing. Um, and, and often people are missing that accounting and finance component. Nobody that I know is great at all three of those areas. Now, how do you, uh, what, I'm assuming that you see more people in there that are great at the product, and you've got to find a way to help them maybe partner with people who are great at finance or partner with people who are great at sales and marketing. Is that a fair statement? That's a fair statement. Those are the connections we're trying to make for people. So, um, you know, our upcoming class, Ken Bossing, is going to be there. Ken oh, yeah, great guy. basically has developed marketing organizations which help you sell anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but he's one of our key coaches. Uh, another guy, Aaron Heinrichs, is going to be helping us with, with branding um, and, and telling people what that is like and what that involves. So, yeah, we're trying to make connections to other people who have expertise in and, 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 and are best at something that you're not the best yeah. at. Of course, this yeah. is a tough transition for a lot of people who found companies that, you know, they don't get to wear all the hats. Yeah. Now, what do you like so much, Gary? You're committed to doing this. What do you like so much about building an organization like Clean Start? Well, I just, I just get energized by the companies and the ideas that are out there. You've got so many clever people, and and you can see the vision that they have and why the world needs this, and trying to get from where they are to this bigger opportunity um, is just a great joy for me. 
Yeah, yeah. And thinking about that and what that does, this is my hometown. You came here a number of years ago, so now this is your hometown uh, as well, I'd say now, um, in many respects. And what does this growth do for a region like Sacramento? Well, Sacramento, call it 30 years ago, had a problem of being a, a government and a military town. Mm -hmm. So its economy went through a slump. But yet it has a lot of unique resources, uh, the, the, the cost of living, the, just the general uh, well-being that we have around here. And my partner and I uh, said, this is a place that should be a, a hub for developing the companies the world needs to get into this more sustainable mode. Now, of course, the politics have gone in that direction in the meantime. That's good. Um, but when you think about some of the things that have been accomplished, uh, per person in California, we don't use any more electricity today than we used 30 years ago. Now we've got more people. Yeah, we got a lot more people. But um, uh, that was a heck of an accomplishment. And, and at the time that that challenge was put out there, it's when I was in the legislature, that they, you know that was possible. A lot of people just said to absolutely never happen. And now it has happened. And in this state, we just went through the extension of cap and trade. And there's a lot of criticism that, you know, oh, cap and trade, it isn't generating the kind of revenue that we thought it was going to. And then, then you got to turn your head around and say, well, if it's not generating the kind of revenue, it's that we, we must be cur curbing our carbon emissions because <laughs> buying Some, the offsets aren't working. valuable. It's sort of like, isn't that success? Yeah. And so yeah. in the recent legislation that was passed, we've lowered the targets. Um, so we, we're actually ahead of the game. I mean, think of what that's like. And now it's the sixth largest economy in the world and we're shrinking our carbon footprints as an entire, you know, number six economy in the world. That's a big deal. That's yeah. really interesting to be a part of. And if some small companies here are a piece of that, as in fact they're becoming, um, then that's where all the energy comes from to keep doing this. Any words of wisdom as we, uh, we kind of wrap up this segment, words of wisdom from entrepreneurship, and then also maybe pull out the crystal ball, crystal ball if you will, what's Sacramento going to look like in the coming years? Big questions there. Um, you know, I think the key on entrepreneurship is persistence. But as I mentioned before, listen more than you speak. Um, ha have no fear to readjust. John Bissell, original yes. company, Micromitis, yes. banged away, as you were saying, and uh, he had one way of making a product. He discovered there was a better product and a better way to do it. He shifted, and now he's got all this money coming in. The revenues are going right. up. Nestle invested into his company, right? Yeah. And, be, uh, be flexible. Yeah. You know, When you hear something from a customer or even from your technical team that something's not going right, shift. Yes. Um, what will Sacramento be like in the future? Well, we're trying to get from 5,000 jobs in this core clean tech industry to 10,000. I think that makes it a much more vibrant economy. It means students who graduate from Davis and Sac State Engineering, they stay here because there's a lot of jobs here. Now you've got companies that are stealing employees from each other. I know on the positive side, that's really cool. That means yeah. you can grow companies from what we have. No doubt. Growing companies right here in Sacramento. I want to thank you, Gary, for coming on the show. When we return, we will be bringing back Carolina Marcus, and we'll be talking more about how to drive sales and what entrepreneurs can do today to boost their revenues here in Sacramento. Join the revolution at HaneyBiz.com, courtesy of the Entrepreneurs Organization of Sacramento. This is the Haney Biz Project.